So I thought I would take a look at the generator and see if I could uh, fix the issue. Or take it out at least and take a look at it. It's really hard to get to. So I had to remove the power steering pump and the reservoir. I had to move this uh, reservoir for the coolant. And down here is the generator. It is connected on these two brackets down here and then some top brackets that's really hard to see. And this generator, I can't get it out of this hole, that's why it's down here. I was able to remove everything from the back of it. Two areas here on the shaft, that those two are connected with brushes. And this is the rest of the the back plate, back plastic thing here, and these two brushes are the ones that connect to that thing. And they're too short. They should be sticking out way more, maybe like this much, when they're new. But I'm gonna replace this, that's the plan. Usually what people do is just, they just replace the whole generator. I don't think it's that uncommon for people to do that. But actually you just need to replace this part. And if you really wanna save money or not replace unnecessary stuff you can just replace these brushes it's a bit more complicated to do but it's possible this is how coals look or can look and i found this here in my garage they're actually for an angle grinder but it's the same thing and they are a bit too big to fit here, so if I cut them in half or I make them smaller, they should fit in here. So this is the back of the coals, the brushes as you call them in English. So I need to unsolder this and then they should just plop out. So that's what I'm gonna attempt. I just cleaned it up with an angle grinder. So this is what was inside one of the is one of the coals with the with the spring and there's the other one. So now I have two holes here which I can fit the spring in and then some other coals. So now I need to modify this. When I modified it, I just need to place the spring like this and then run it through this thing here. So it comes out of one of the holes here. I will cut off that upper part. I modified one of them. It looks quite nice. They're a bit fragile, these. So I have to be careful with it. I just used this file to make it smaller. They're both modified right now. They're way smaller. All I did was to use this file. See all the material, the dust that's built up here, that's coal. Now I pushed it in and I have it clamped with this tool. So now it's just showing the spring right there. And then uh, you can, it can still be pushed in all the way. And on the other side it looks like this, the wire is just coming out there. So I need, just need to solder it to that metal plate. Okay, I got it soldered in place. Looks really promising this. They're both soldered now. Seems like I got one of them in the wrong orientation. But I think it should be working fine. I don't think these ones will have as long life as a original one. But yeah, I mean they're gonna work better because they're gonna be pushed in all the way, at least in the beginning. And the more they wear, the more they will come out. So I think this is good enough. They look a bit crooked and stuff, but I think they're going to work. <clears throat> this is going back in the car on the alternator together with everything else. Just put the regulator back, regulator and brushes. Hopefully everything's good. I added some silicone there to protect the... Uh, so other joints I did. I found these hairs inside the generator. Pretty sure they're not supposed to be in there. The 
Generator is in place. It has four bolts. Two on this side and two on the other side. But the one on the bottom here, under the generator, it's so hard to reach. So I couldn't get it in all the way. So it's partially in. But the other three ones are pretty tight. So I'm, I'm gonna be satisfied with that. And as you take cars apart, you find these different problems that you didn't even know you had. Here is the tensioner for the, the this belt, the generator belt, and yeah, so it spins okay like this, but if you rotate it the other way, it doesn't spin at all so well. So these bearings are not good, and there is play in it. You can hear the play. So this one needs to be replaced. It's gonna break eventually. And then you have these other poly things. This is one of them. It's it's okay. I think it has a little bit of play. And then you have another one here. It makes noise and it has play in it. And then further down you have another one here. Let's see if I can get it spin. It sounds terrible. So they all need to be replaced. I'll just have to hope that they don't break so quickly. Hope they last a year at least or more. So I have time to buy the parts and replace it later. But I guess that's what it is having an old car just filled with problems. And as soon as you start fixing one problem, you find like three other problems. Lovely. But I hope we have fixed the generators. That's at least one major issue less to worry about. After a lot of blood, sweat and tears, the car is back together. And I filled up this, this reservoir because I leaked, some leaked out on the floor from the hoses. The belt is in place. Hopefully it's done correctly. All the tools and bolts I dropped down there have been found. So the battery is being back connected. So hopefully it starts and does what it should and hopefully the belt doesn't break because I've done something terribly wrong. Okay, the moment of truth. That's good news. No battery light. Can't see any issues with the belt. So we're running 14.3 volts, which is pretty good. That's normal. Amazingly enough, that was a fix. This job was a real pain in the ass with this car. Not so fun. So I don't want I don't want to revisit this. It was terrible. If I'm going to revisit this, I'm thinking about maybe removing the old radiator so I can get access to everything. And if I'm gonna revisit this, I think I'm gonna do the timing belt and uh, all those pulleys 